welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life. And today I'm going to talk about our favorite history curriculum for homeschooling from kindergarten all the way through high school. Okay, so first I just want to say that our family really does enjoy history. That is my favorite curriculum to pick out every year and um, both of my girls really do enjoy it. So um, I'll start by saying that I have two girls. Sophie, who's eight years old, she's going into second grade and she has special needs. Um, and then I have Katie, who is going into 11th grade. And Katie has been homeschooled since third grade. So um, after this year, I will have homeschooled every year except for 12th grade. Okay, for early elementary school, um, the curriculum that I probably enjoy the most is the Abeka um, little history readers that they have. Um, the kindergarten um, is a little bit different. It's more like a social studies. The, um, the first grade is called Our America, Our World, and this is the second, second grade reader. It's called Our America. These are very short. Um, they're all in color. They give just a very small amount of age-appropriate historical information. Um, it is interactive. You can talk about it with your child. Um, it focuses on patriotism and American songs. Um, there is a little bit of sort of like uh, going around the world, a little bit of geography in the um, first grade book, but the sec second grade book focuses only on America. I find these little books so sweet and we have enjoyed them so much for Sophie. This is one of my picks for elementary, especially for early elementary. We've also, for elementary, used Story of the World. Story of the World is more of a classical approach um, to history. They do have a lot of projects and hands-on things that you can do. My family really never did it that way. We just didn't have the time and we were doing so much other things that we just didn't really feel the need to do it. We were in co-op and things like that. Story of the World is divided into four volumes and each volume is based on a certain point in time. Story of the World starts out with ancient history and then there's a volume on the Middle Ages. Volume three is on early modern times and then volume four is on the modern age. One of the good things about Story of the World is, like I said, you can do as much hands-on as you want to. They have map work. They have a, another whole book that you can buy um, with a lot of hands-on activities. Um, for some people that's a pro, for other people that's a con. Um, you also don't have to buy that book if you don't want to do all of that. We chose not to do that. Um, and they also have um, mp3 downloads which is really nice if you just want to listen to the chapter and you don't want to sit there and read it yourself or if you do a lot of um, trips in the car and things like that. So that's definitely an advantage of Story of the World. Um, a negative of Story of the World is sometimes the uh, lessons are a little bit long. Um, so for younger kids, it might be a little bit hard or you may have to break the lesson up into a couple of days or three days. Um, and the other con is that you are kind of stuck in that time period for the year. Um, it's not a curriculum that bounces around to a bunch of time periods. You're going to be doing ancient history all year long, which you might love that approach, um, but if you don't love that approach, you're stuck there. So that's the only con that I can really think of other than the long lessons, but we did enjoy Story of the World, so I would definitely recommend it. Next for elementary school, I want to talk about master books. Now, um, we have not used master books yet in our elementary school, but we do have this one. Um, this is my story one. I almost used that this year with Sophie, but there's a good bit of writing in here and writing is such a struggle for her that I like to keep it to the, you know, language arts and math since we like have no choice but to write in language arts, math and handwriting. So I like to limit handwriting in like social studies or history as well as science if I can. Um, this book looks really good and we may um, do some of the selected readings from this um, and kind of use it as a resource this year and just skip some of the writing. Um, but this is from Master Books. This book is set up to do um, 30 minutes a day, five days a week for 36 weeks and it has different quests in it. It's kind of like a unit. Um, 
and it starts at the community level then it moves to um, America it kind of kind of starts going to, through the continent so America Central America South America um, and Africa are in the quest to um, and then it goes through Canada it goes to Russia and China um, and then it goes through India, Australia, and the islands. So, and then it goes through Europe. So, this is kind of a little bit of a survey of the world. It reminds me a little bit of, of, of Becca's um, first grade history reader in that it's just sort of like a, a high level survey, um, a little bit of geography. But this has obviously got a lot more to it. Um, this is supposed to be um, a first or second grade level. They also have a My Story 2. I think they intend for this to be kindergarten and first grade, and then the My Story 2 to be a second grade level. Um, but this one looks really good too. This is definitely one that we will probably use to supplement um, this year with Sophie, but I didn't want to um, sort of call it her primary curriculum just because of all the writing that was in here. I wasn't sure if that would work out. I'm also really interested in some of the other master books. Um, history curriculum for older elementary. We've not used those. I'm going to go ahead and put a few pictures of those up and just kind of give you a little bit of information about those. So I'm definitely interested in master books, America's Story 1, 2, and 3. These are geared for um, grades 3 through 6, um, and this is a three-year program. And it appears to cover things in a time period. Um, so for the first one is the, um, the beginning of America and then the Civil War to the early 1900s and then the early 1900s to modern times. Okay, next is The Good and the Beautiful. Um, I will say personally, this has been my favorite. The Good and the Beautiful is a lot different than other history curriculum that you might be familiar with because it does not... It does have four volumes, but unlike Story of the World, you don't stay in ancient history for the whole year. Every year you hit all four time periods. So um, that might be something that sounds really appealing to you if you don't want to camp out in ancient history for an entire year. Um, I wasn't sure I would like that, honestly, because the, the whole back and forth, I didn't know if I would like that. But in, in um, a practical sense, when we actually start using this, I really do like it. So um, this is history year one. So for every lesson, you're just going to follow what it says to do. So there's gonna be a read aloud that's part of it. There, there might be a, a story from the big book of stories. And then there also could be um, an audio file. There's this audio file that you'll use periodically. And it's just another story where these two kids are visiting their aunt and uncle that are history buffs. And you hear other stories through the storytelling. And it's, it's, um, it's very effective. It's very interesting. It's a lot different than any other curriculum that I've ever used. It's very creative, and I feel like it's very engaging for kids. There are a few hands-on activities. As you get through the unit, you can either do it or not do it. It doesn't really matter. And there are age-appropriate, what they call student explorers, where the student has some coloring sheets or some map work to do or some articles to read or even papers to write, just depending on the age of the child. And that comes um, with this. So you'll have the book, either the map book or the big book of stories, the student explorer for every um, child that's going to be doing this. And, um, and then you'll have those audio files. And it also comes with a game. So your family can sit around and play the game. And it tells you in, the, um, in each lesson when you're going to do what. The other thing that they have is a timeline and they also have timeline stickers. So that's kind of a fun activity. So it will tell you um, within the course when you need to place your sticker on the timeline and um, and so that's also a great resource to use. The other thing about the good and the beautiful is they advertise it as from kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, what I will say about that is that um, it is probably ideal for about second grade through probably eighth grade. Um, that's probably where it really is the best. Kindergartners and first graders may not really get everything that the book is um, going into, but at the same time, since these are meant to be repeated, that's probably okay. Um, and then again, with high school, there are a few considerations. 
um, to think about whether or not you want to use it for high school. They definitely do have high school level student explorers. It is doable for high school. In my opinion, it's a little bit harder. Um, is it worth it? Maybe it is. Um, it's a really good curriculum. I'm going to be doing a separate video that talks about the pros and cons of using the good and the beautiful for high school and how to do it. So if you want to do a really good um, history program for high school and you want to do use the good and the beautiful curriculum, I'm going to make a separate video that talks all about that. Um, this video is going up on Monday and I, I'm, I plan for that video to go up on Friday of the same week. Let's move on now to the mystery of history. So the mystery of history, in my opinion, works best for middle school. Um, they advertise it as a curriculum that could be for all ages, so kindergarten through high school. You probably could use it um, for high school, but if you do, you probably have a few of the same problems um, that the good and the beautiful has where you're not you're not necessarily doing an economics course or an American history course. So you're having to kind of create your course and base it around um, the volumes that they have. The mystery of history is a lot like story of the world. However, it's written at a higher um, reading level and comprehension level than story of the world. That's why, in my opinion, it works better for older kids. So at least maybe fifth or sixth grade through eighth grade. And my, this is my personal opinion after using it. That would be the ideal range for me. Um, although I do know that a lot of people use it for um, elementary school as well as high school. So the mystery of history works very similarly to story of the world. Um, both of those have a classical feel in that you're on a history cycle. You're going to do um, you know, ancient times, and then you're going to do the Middle Ages, then maybe the Renaissance, and then maybe the modern times, and you're only going to do that, you know, point in time for that whole year, and then they also are meant to be cycled through again. Um, so they do have age-appropriate assignments um, in those. They do have a book where you can make crafts and do different things like what Story of the World has. They also have tests. Um, and quizzes and that makes it nice if you're doing a middle school course or if you're trying to do high school you have a means of assessment so that's good um, as far as the mystery of history they also have audio files um, like i mentioned with story of the world so if you don't want to sit around a table and read it and you just want to do the audio files and you don't care about all the crafts and things and you're spending a lot of time in your car then you can do the mp3 files and you can listen to it on the go and we did do that so I kind of back up and say that um, we used Story of the World when Katie was in elementary school. We used the Mystery of History um, from sixth grade through ninth grade. In ninth grade, we really didn't count it. It was just kind of a supplement, but we did use it. Um, and so that's kind of our experience. We went through both of those um, curriculum. We went through each one of those uh, only one time. We did not cycle back through them. Um, I know that a lot of people enjoy doing that and you can kind of um, not spend as much money if you do that, but for me personally, I get bored with that. I, I really don't want to go through Story of the World again. I really don't want to go through the Mystery of History again. That's just me. So um, anyway, that's how we use those. So far, we've talked mostly about elementary school and middle school. So just kind of to summar summarize both of those. So for elementary school, I definitely like a Becca in the early grades and I like the good and the beautiful and I also like story of the world. For middle school, I think um, the good and the beautiful also works really well as well as the mystery of history. I also want to share one more idea for middle school. I haven't used World Story by Masterbooks, but this looks really good to me as well. It's a Charlotte Mason style covering the ancients, middle ages, and modern age. Um, and now I want to move on to high school. Remember, I will be talking about the good and the beautiful, the pros and cons of using it in high school, and how to use it in high school if you want to do that in a separate video. I have a lot to say about that, so I'm not going to put it in this video just because of time. But I am going to go ahead and tell you about the other um, programs that I do recommend for high school in addition to the Good and the Beautiful. And the first is Abeka. I really like Abeka's government program. It was really, really good. It's a uh, one semester class on U.S. government. Most high school um, kids are going to need a half a credit in U.S. government or sometimes they'll call it civics. 
So that meets the criteria. It's very well done. They do have a video class, but in my opinion, you, can, you really can just read the book, take the quizzes, answer the questions, um, you know, just complete it on your own. You really don't need the video at all. Um, my daughter Katie did like the video. We started out the year using the video and she said the video was really good and she really enjoyed it. But at some point we ended up stopping the video just because it added so much more time to the course and she really didn't need it. She was easily able just to read and do on her own without spending the money for the video and without um, using that. Another course that we've used with Abeka that was really, really good and is also a half credit course and that was their geography course. Um, it's a geography, um, a Christian perspective, I believe is the exact title of it. That one is really, really good as well. And another course that we haven't used yet, but we are very likely to use is Abeka's economics course. So again, economics is a one semester course um, from Abeka. It's set up very similarly to their, um, to their government class and their geography class. And Katie really liked both of those so much that I believe that she would really enjoy their economics class. That's probably the direction that we're going to go with economics at this point. I also want to share with you some other resources for high school that I have found very, very helpful. The first is Masterbooks American History. Um, we used that with Katie this year in 10th grade. Katie really enjoyed this book. Most colleges are looking for one year of American history, one year of world history, um, one semester of economics, one semester of government, and sometimes geography is also required. Um, and then sometimes there are state-specific requirements, like you know maybe um, a state-specific study. Our state does not require that. So the way this one is structured is that you have 34 chapters for 34 weeks of school. For every week, um, you're, you're in one chapter and you're, you have reading assignments for four days with some questions to answer um, about what they read every day. It's, um, it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, and then on the fifth day, there's an exam. And the exam is based on the work that you've done all week. And, um, and then they also had quarterly exams in this book as well. So Katie, like I said, Katie really enjoyed this. One of the things that we found enjoyable about the Master Books curriculum as well as the Good and the Beautiful curriculum was there were things that were covered that were not covered in some of the other things that we've used like, um, like Story of the World or um, the Mystery of History. So we really enjoyed that, you know, learning about some of these different things. So with the American history book, there's also a teacher book. The teacher book has all the assignments um, as well as the answers. And it also has all of the quizzes and tests as well as the answers. Um, it does not have the student text in there. So you would need both because if you just have this, you just have the reading, just have the teacher guide, you only have the questions and answers. So um, you definitely need um, some, you, you definitely need both of them. What I liked about the end of this book is they um, they talked about contemporary issues, um, things that are kind of controversial. And remember, this is a high school level course. So, um, but I think it's good to be able to have these discussions with your teen before they go off to college. So one of the things that they included in that was abortion. Um, this is all from a Christian worldview racial um, reconciliation, the problem um, in America and other countries with race and how the races can reconcile and um, you know what God thinks about um, all of this and, and, and why this should be important to us. Um, the future of homeschooling and Christian education. And then uh, there's even one called Christianity and Hip Hop. Um, and then there's uh, the last chapter is um, Contemporary Issues Part 2. There's a lesson on euthanasia, uh, global warming, health care, and population explosion. So I just found this book to be really well done, very interesting and timely. So we really enjoyed this one um, for Katie. We um, 
I'm going to link a video up top about our 10th grade curriculum choices. We started out with the good and the beautiful. We did use the good and the beautiful. I'll explain more about that as well in my um, high school good and the beautiful. But we ended up pulling this in, and I'm glad we did because this was definitely a good curriculum. Not to take anything away from the good and the beautiful, but we really did enjoy this one as well. Um, okay, and then also in, for high school, um, a couple more things that we are planning to use or did use in love. Um, this is the world history version of the book that I just showed you. This is also from Master Books. It's set up in a similar way, 34 weeks, four um, lessons every week, and then you take an exam. It's got a teacher guide. This is a consumable book if you just pull, you know, out the assignments and tests and all that. So. The assignments are in here along with the answers, and, um, and this is really a similar type of book except this one's for world history. And Katie liked the American history so much that she was really excited to do this world history next year. We actually had intended to dual enroll, but she really wanted to do this book, so we are. Two more resources that I really like for high school American history. Um, and I do tend to be eclectic and kind of pull things in, um, and so I'm just kind of giving you my two cents here. But we like the Patriot, a Patriot's History of the United States. Um, there's also an audiobook. You can see this thing's huge, so no, we didn't read through this whole thing. But I did use selections of this. Um, I found this book very interesting, and um, this is by um, Larry Schweikert and Michael Allen. Um, this is a good book, especially if you want to assign reading on like a certain um, historical figure in American history or a certain time period um, in American history. I really like this book. All right, and then another one that we really liked for American history are, um, is this book, Seven Miracles That Saved America by Chris Stewart and Ted Stewart. So um, this is really a neat little book. It talks about the seven miracles that saved America being the unlikely discovery of the Americas by Christopher Columbus, um, how and why desperate English colonists were able to survive the starving time at Jamestown, the Battle of New York during the Revolutionary War, the miraculous creation of the United States Constitution, Abraham Lincoln's desperate prayer that turned, into the, that turned the tide of the Civil War at Gettysburg, how a series of extraordinary events changed the Battle of Midway during World War II, and the preservation of Ronald Reagan's life from an assassin's bullet, allowing him the time he needed to help extend freedom around the world. So this is a really good book as well. We, um, we have enjoyed uh, working our way through this book um, in talking about American history. Okay, so those are some of our favorite textbooks and other resources for history from kindergarten through 12th grade. Like I said, um, come back on Friday. I'm going to have a video that and that is completely about the good and the beautiful for high school, pros and cons, and how to do it if you wanna do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.